Well, what's wonderful about the two of us is we're not two of the same. No, we're not. We're two very different. Your PhD is in economics and you come from a whole different world of the business and what works in business. And I'm all Mr. Theoretical Physics. Well, actually, it's economic history. OK, economic and, history. And so, so my job was to try to figure out a theory as to how things right. might work. Okay, you know, so you do this and you get this part. You get this result. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the construction of a theory and the testing of the theory becomes important. Right. right and a lot right. of it is um, there is there is an accounting. I mean, we, we have to count numbers. Right. And astronomers and economists become history, good. History, you need to know dates and things. Yeah. So I, I, I left completely satisfied that I had met one of the great minds <laughs> in the well, church. I don't know about great minds, but we, we each brought our skills to the table. And after that, we, we never really worked together closely. So, so we had this great conversation. And we talked about how we thought we could, we could connect into the calendar of the Dead Sea Scrolls, which has an association with the calendar of Enoch. Right, right, right. And that was really clear to me. And there was some lunar stuff that we did. And I was happy. I said, John Pratt is like, wow. I've written one paper on one or two papers on that. And we might have done a joint one. I've forgotten because I try to always do credit wherever. So, so after, the, after this but exchange. That's held up. It's still accurate. I yeah, think. Absolutely good. After this exchange, you call me up. OK. Or I called you. Some, no, I think it, you say whatever you say, I've got a date for the first vision. Oh, yes, sure. And I said, I yeah, tell me about it. I said, I've looked for a date for the first vision. It's not going to be easy to find. You know, I think you phoned me first because didn't you read my article before? I did. Yes. Yeah. That before was you phoned, I didn't check with you or ask. No, 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 no. You already had you were out I there. had a date for the first vision. I didn't know you had ever worked on that. His you, his book was April it, 6 on the birth of Christ. Well, the, the tradition was that the, the, the April 6 could have been a first yeah, vision date. It might have been. I've seen that suggested. And, and, and I went I says I can test this. So I published the, the paper and, 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 and you know, this was years you ago. You saw the paper and phoned me back. And what did you say? I said, I don't know how you got to this date. <laughs> this this March 26 is interesting. I, I I don't understand exactly how your mind is working on the on the calendar of Enoch. I've never worked with the calendar of Enoch in that way. We have talked about the calendar of Enoch and how it finds an appearance in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Okay, I know it's ancient and I know that it has has validity for for these people. So I I says well okay, but you're so specific. You you know you have Monday no not Monday Sunday right. Right. March 26, 1820, the day of the first vision. I says, <laughs> you've, 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 you, when you make it, when you make a prediction like that, you really put yourself at risk. You I'm know at that. risk. You are greatly at risk. You, you, you can, you can be vague and things like this and say, I know how to test this though, because you gave me one date, I can test it. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you what I mean, what I remember that you said, it's a little different, it's two, two stories. You phoned and you said, I read your paper. I see what you've, you've done. And you, you said you got it from the Enoch calendar. But you said, John, you and I are friends. Tell me, how did you really get it? And I said, I really got it from the calendar. He said, no, come on. No, you couldn't have done that. How did you really get it? You were I could on the phone. I could tell you were winking at me, you know. Yeah, well, I, I wasn't sure it was. I, I mean, OK, you can pick any date you want. Of course. I know, but it's just you had. You, and, and, and how did you really I get it? How not, did you really get it? How did you really get it? It's, I it's, couldn't convince you. I, I actually did. What I, I, I wasn't ready to say yes or, or no. I, I mean, oh, right. it's a date. It's a date. It's a date in 1820. You got the year right. Good. And it's spring, early spring. Got it. You got it. OK. How did you do it? Right. See, and I said, read the paper. That's how I that's really yeah, how no, I did it. Yeah, but OK. But then I sprung it on you. Yeah. Yeah. I says, look, John. I know how to test this. Right. I know how to test this. And I, I know the you weather. weather. I know records. the weather. I, I, know, I have not looked. I've not looked at March 26. I've looked at April 6. I've looked at all of April. I, I can't find anything that really <coughs> sits in the early spring with beautiful weather. Yeah, it's snow and rain. <clears throat> so I ordered the whole microfilm from the National Archives paid for it and they sent it to me. I went down to the local library, put it up on a 
Yeah, the, the microfilm reader. Microfiche reader, microfilm reader. I says, reader. Where's, where's March? Where's March? Because I already had a copy of April. I says, where's March? And I, I, and I remember it so well. I, I find March... I find the days. It's it's a good record. You know that, you, right? The, I mean, the I've days are numbered. The, the, the days are numbered. I come right down. Twenty five, twenty six, and I go across there. I get the weather. I get the temperatures. And I, I think he's got it. I think he's got I it. I remember you, you were <laughs> ecstatic, and I was I, I, tense, wondering how's this going to come out. I says this, and then I went back and forward. I went back the other way. I said, wow, this thing. This is this is um, this is uniquely. A, a weather condition right. that satisfies the account. And yeah, it was a very unusual weather, something that a young boy would remember all through a snowy spring that, hey, there was one good day. I remember it was a clear spring day. Yeah. And so, so the, it's interesting how that little detail was leads preserved the, in, in, in the account. Leads to the answer. Yeah. Leads to the Without that, without that, we have no story. Right. We have no story. And so uh, I came back and said, I think you got it. I think you got it. And then I had done some business in um, maple syrup and had become aware of what the Smith family did with sugar production. Right. So I put that into the story. Well, and you were in that area. I well, was, I was, I had, you were I had about that, to move to that area. No, I had no. property in Vermont and I'd done a... Okay, had property there. Yeah, you know, I had some sugar production up there and... So uh, that was it. And I said, let's write an article. Right. And that was a joint article. Yes, absolutely. I said, let's write an article. So again, you had this entirely different mind. I had my mystical magic Enoch calendar, which no one really understands. Everybody says, well, yeah, whatever. And then you come along with the practical, hey, the Smiths were making sugar. And here's how you have to do it. You need this kind of weather. It has to go from you know, cold to hot. Th that's and true, true. But more, more important than witness. that, uh, equally as important as that, is um, the United States Yeah. Uh, uh, Surgeon General of the United States Army has just put out an order. He's a young guy. He's just put out an order months before that all 14 of his Military posts will keep daily weather records. Right. Was it three times a day? Three times a day. Three times and a day. And whether it was clear or cloudy and the temperature. I had no appreciation of, of the extensive nature. And that of, was the first year they had ever done it. This the is very the first, 1820. first time ever done in history. No country had yeah, ever done it before. Amazing. This is the first, the first weather, official weather report in the history of the world. But I just loved how he was so apologetic, <laughs> like, I know you probably don't care about the weather. So, so that becomes actually an, a valuable thing because it is the very first weather report in the history of man. And, and now they have whole and, weather channels where I know, you can watch the weather but, all over the U.S. It's but that, to have the first weather report in history is, in is, history, is a big plus. But the first weather report in history has the date of the first vision. In it. And that's now that's, that's good. Astounding. That's the hand of God. That's what I think, too. This is not random. This is the hand of yeah, God. God wants us to know this day. Amen. And it never would have happened without Enoch. Well, now, tell me how you got to Enoch. How, how did you get Enoch's mind working in such a way that you got into this day? Well, the whole, the whole key to the Enoch is they always have these hermetic sayings of as above, so beneath, you know, and... They have, I don't know all the meanings of that. It's huge meanings of fractals and everything. But one of them was that they would number the days of a year the same as the, the number 364 years, the same as the 364 days. And that was, I mean, that is so clear in the, in the, in the, in the Dead Sea Scrolls. The, yeah. And, it's and, right there. And, and once you the start to week. believe that, wait a minute, these are actually God's calendars and what if that's actually meaningful? This is like the apologetic. What if, what if this isn't just some priest that conjured it up or con concocted it? What if God's actually doing this? And as I did research, I found out, whoa, not only do things happen on holy days, but they happen on holy days in holy years, where this year only comes around once in 364 years. And so you got a holy day and a holy year. And by the way, a lot of the foundation of the church is, is doing that, of the, 
that's another story. The important thing is the first vision, the obvious day for it was on the, the because it's the only holy day at the very beginning. It's the first day of the year. But that year was the first year of a set of 364. So and you, how does that relate to the whole cycle of all years? Well, oh, well, that's another. Uh, yeah, that's uh, I haven't published that part yet. <laughs> But, but they this do is all it. years. Yeah, there's a big picture of all 7000. What got you started in this? How do you an, ec an economic hi economic history or history of economics either way? PhD get started writing a whole book on April 6th. Uh, it comes from the Book of Mormon from my reading of the Book of Mormon. How did you start counting the days and all of that? Well, it's it's uh, you, you can't count the days unless every day is significant. And in the Book of Mormon, we have a date for the destruction, for the death of Christ, and for the destruction of the wicked. It's an, a very exact date. Yes, thirty fourth year, first month. All right, very precise. That's where I start. That's right. And I says, all right, now fourth we, day of the thirty fourth year. And so that date is very precise. And the other part of the story is the day when the believers were going to be killed. We're going to be killed if when the sun goes down, the when light is doesn't born. fill up with light. And that becomes a, a, um, a new calendar count for the Nephites. And the, and the day where it all goes dark on the fourth day of the 34th year, that ties to a day that we know from history of the crucifixion of Christ. So there you so, so, so you have Sir Isaac Newton, I think, was the first to come into that Friday crucifixion date. Now, that's that's a, a, a marvel without without calculus and without without even some appreciation. He was amazing. Absolutely amazing. He did this but with with quill pen. He, he, he spent half of his life doing Biblical chronology, right? He wrote more on chronology and even well, let's just say biblical chronology than he did on physics. He did. Uh, John Pratt, is it true or do I remember? Do I remember correctly? When you were um, in elementary school, you uh, you took um, you took the streetcar in, in Salt Lake City and you would memorize prime numbers. Oh, uh, <laughs> no, that's not true. I was, I, I have somewhere on my web page, one of my great discoveries of life was prime numbers, but it was when I was four years old. And, oh, so it was before kindergarten. Yeah, yeah, it's before kindergarten. <laughs> I, I had this idea that no you were- No bus, and I walked to school in those days. But but what it was, I mean, it's very simple. I had a bunch of uh, marbles, I think, or jelly or beans. I think mom would give me all these beans. I was a bean counter. Uh, and I noticed that you could that some numbers of beans you could put into a rectangle. And there were other numbers that no matter how I tried, I could not put into a rectangle. They didn't. They were only one times 13. There's not something times something equals 13. And I did start making a list of all these funny numbers that you couldn't make a rectangle out of. And those were prime numbers. And those are prime numbers. Because if you can make a rectangle, then it's this times that equals the number of beans, right? But I remember so, where so, I was. I was four years old when I lived in that house. I remember being on the floor and I got so excited that there were differences between numbers inherent in the number itself. So what what number sort of jumped? Was the number seven exciting for you? Number three? Well, all the prime numbers, seven and, and seven especially, uh, not three so much as too small, but the numbers that other people shunned, everybody likes 12, you know, because it's, you know, in 60 minutes in a day, in an hour and 24 hours in a day. And they, they like the other ones because you can divide them up and make so many rectangles out of 24, three times eight, six times four. And I did kind of like the ones that didn't work. And so how does it work with these calendars? You want two prime numbers. The, the sacred round uses 13 
and 20, which is, you know, four times five, no common factors. So they had, they would use numbers that are, it's called relatively prime to each other. And that's how these calendars are formed. The prime numbers are the key to these calendars. So at age three, at age four. At age four, I discovered prime numbers. Who discovered that you discovered prime numbers at age four? Your mother? Oh, no, I discovered it later on. I, I said later on in school, they said these are prime numbers. And I finally thought, oh, that's, I know what they are. <laughs> Oh, I didn't know what to call them when I was four. I just knew they were, you know. There's one other story there that my mother would tell. And it was when it was when it was younger. I was like three. And when I was three years old, mom taught me what a calendar was. And she showed me, and she was teaching me, you know, stuff all the time. And everything else was, yeah, fine, you know, horsey, ducky, got it, you know. And she said, when I learned that a number went with a day, she said, I just ran around the house. She said, she couldn't understand it. I, it's like, I was running around screaming and, and went wild that each number means a day. And I still do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I came with something as very young, something was built into me on calendars. And she only told me that story after I'd done a lot of work on this. So, so how many people have you met that really understand what you've done? You've got a good, about three or four have a good handle. I don't, I don't. Okay, well, I, you've got, you have some fundamentals of the ideas, and I don't know anybody that's got it. What, right now, what I'm doing is I'm writing a tutorial on Instagram with one picture and one caption every day. And I'm already up to 200 now. And if somebody reads three of those, they'll start to understand what it's all about. But it's a lot. It's almost nobody. So you feel kind of lonely sometimes? Uh, no, I'm glad to be alone because I can work. If I were famous or something, I wouldn't be able to do my work. You know, I'd be speaking and talking and all of that. It's wonderful to, to be nobody. This was this thing on. And by the way, that wasn't Hugh Nibley that said that. It was someone else that's a, a Chinese philosopher. But he, the, the saying was, the greatest man is nobody. Because he's free to go around and do everything with nobody knowing. And to help. And that's how I've been. I've been able to figure out all these dates and nobody's interfered with it. But hardly anybody's interested. Hardly anybody's interested, but that's okay. Somebody's got to do the work. Great artists are known after they're gone. I've always figured this would be discovered after I was long gone. Hey, John. Yeah. You're getting old. You noticed. I did. Yeah, you're not the same guy I you were when we're I first no met. We're no longer the Bobsy twins. <laughs> we are no longer the Bobsy twins. Both of us have had life experience. We have. And. When we look back, it was a big thing in my life that you wrote that letter to me. I, I, I thank you for noticing what I did. And uh, it's, it's been wonderful to have now 40 years of this kind of give and take. Uh, is, is God hand in this? Well, here's how I look at it. To me, the, the takeaway of this one just this one date, and I've, I've written on at least 200 dates in history, but President Hinckley would stand up and tie the whole truth of the church onto the basis of the first vision. Do you remember that? I remember that. And he'd say, if the first vision didn't happen, none of this is true. You know, none of this, I mean, you know, he, he really put a lot it's, onto that day. N n he put everything. Okay, he put <laughs> everything on that day. He says the church has no foundation if the first vision is because not true. Because if Joseph, yeah, if he's lied about that, he could lie about other stuff, et cetera, et cetera. And that was a huge thing. And he knew it had happened, and he was willing. Talk about put your head on the chopping block. He was willing to make that statement. Well, we haven't known the date. And, and another one, by the way, is the date of, of Easter is another huge one, where, and the date of the birth of Christ. And they say, these are the biggest events in history. And they say, wonderful, what was the day? Well, we don't know. 
but well, we do. Argue, but we, this was, well, now, yeah, with these calendars, we do know, but we know. Yeah. But scholars all over still don't know, and they argue over it. To me, this date of the first vision is close to the resurrection of Christ in importance. It's <clears throat> one of the very few times in history, of the, I can't even think of another, where the Father and the Son both appear to somebody. And it's important to know the date, and it's also important to know the place. And that one, we know the place. Yeah. Uh, but and see, the consequence is, is huge. It's huge. Yeah, the dispensation. Because it makes it real in history. See, when you study history, it's a... No, when no. you know the date and the place, people still argue over the Book of Mormon because they don't know the place. And there's all these different groups, maybe here, maybe there. And that weakens it. it if you really knew that this happened on this date and this place, that makes it real. And that's what's happened in Bible archaeology. They say, wow, this city actually existed. We just found it. And all the people that didn't believe the Bible now have hard evidence. And, sure. Yeah. So this is a hard evidence. A newspaper with the weather in it. Hard evidence. From 1820. Of exactly what Joseph Smith described. It's huge, I think.